So we're going to continue our conversation with 3.3 uh, with z-scores and the empirical rule here. So uh, z-score is really a way of comparing different data sets. And here are a couple of uh, formulas for the sample and then again for the population. And again, it depends if, we're, if we asked everyone or if we just got a small sample and whether we're using x-bar or we're using mu. But it's a nice way to compare. Uh, it's, a, it's a common measuring stick. So if I want to be able to compare um, a history exam with a, a math exam, points aren't exactly the same. So I want to see my relative standing, uh, how I did in each specific class, and then compare those two. And the units of a z-score are in standard deviation. So it's going to tell us how many standard deviations away we are. So let's look at an example here. So say we have some students, uh, John and uh, Ali here, and uh, they're on different grading scales. So the GPA, we have one that's a 4.0 scale, then one that's slightly different here. And uh, we want to see how they did relative to their school there, so who actually performed better in this case. So since they're different scales, we're going to need a common measuring stick. Okay. So uh, let's go ahead and calculate then uh, the z-scores in order to compare them. And just to note, we are talking populations here since it's the entire school. So we do have the school mean, which is mu. Um, so we're going to be using that. And then we have the school standard deviation, which is sigma. Again, when we're applying the formula, uh, technically, we're just subtracting from the mean over the standard deviation, so it's not too big of a deal now. But technically, we are talking populations here. So let's go ahead and get John's z-score. So his value minus the mean over the, his standard deviation here. And if we calculate that, that's going to give us a negative 0.21. So his z-score is negative 0.21 standard deviations from the mean. And since it's negative, that means it's on the lower end there. So the z-score, again, is the number of standard deviations. Let's go ahead and calculate uh, Ali's here. And we find out that his is negative 0.30. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and graph these on the same axis here, just so we could kind of get a nice comparison. So there's our mean. And if we're talking z-scores, uh, it's going to be right, uh, zero is going to be right in the center. Because if your mean is three and you are uh, right at the mean, then you're zero standard deviations away. So zero is always going to be that middle marker there. And then we have negative 0.30 and negative 0.21. And we could see that uh, Ali's is more to the left there, so larger negative. And then we have John's. Okay, and so if we want to uh, compare their GPAs of who uh, is performing better, GPAs, uh, we want to have a higher score. Now, this is not always the case. If you're a runner um, and you want to have a lower Z-score because less time means you're faster. So it really depends on the context. But in this case, you want to have a higher score in this case. And so we see negative 0.21 is going to be uh, higher. So John has a better GPA since he has a higher Z-score in this case. Uh, let's look at the empirical rule. And the empirical rule is a nice way to start attaching probabilities with these z-scores. So once you know your relative standing of where that z-score is, what percentage kind of associates with it? And the empirical rule does a good estimate. Um, it tells us here that if you go one standard deviation out from the center uh, on a normal distribution, you're going to end up with roughly about 68% of your uh, 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 probability within there or of your sample there. If you go out two standard deviations, you're going to end up with about 95%. And this is a nice marker because we're going to start talking about unusual. Uh, once you go out about two standard deviations, you have about almost all the data, 95%. So anything beyond that starts being an unusual case. And then if you go out three standard deviations, you have about 99.7%. So uh, uh, just a, a small amount is beyond that. We usually don't really talk about beyond three standard deviations because the probabilities are so small.
So let's do an example. So uh, let's say for an exam, the mean uh, is 80 with a standard deviation of, let's say, uh, 5. What percent received a score between 75 and 85 here? So I'm going to go ahead and do a little sketch here. We're going to do kind of a normal distribution here. We're going to assume that this is normal. 80 is going to be right smack in the middle. That's where your mean is at. And so what we're looking for is here's 85, here's 90, and 95. And I'm using increments of 5 because that's my standard deviation. So I'm marking 1, 2, and 3 standard deviations to the right. I'm also going to do that to the left. So I'm going by increments of 5 here or increments of standard deviations. So we could talk about this in terms of exam scores, but we could also talk about that x-axis in terms of z-scores. And if we're talking z-scores, then that means we have 0 in the middle, 1, 2, 3, and then negative 1, negative 2, negative 3. So that x-axis is going to... Uh, we want to be able to go back and forth to talk about the units that we're, that we're describing or z-scores as well. And so if I want the people who are between 75 and 85, notice that that's one standard deviation in each direction. So the uh, empirical rule uh, tells us that we're going to end up with 68% within there because we're uh, going out in one standard deviation in each direction. So it's going to be about 68%. Okay, let's try another one here. What percent had a score between 70 and 90? So let's find that on our graph. Okay, and uh, that's going to actually be um, uh, 95 here because we see that we're going one, two standard deviations in both directions there. And so empirical rule tells us within two standard deviations, that's going to be 95%. So let's look at see what percent had a score between 80 and 85. So now we're just looking from the center and one standard deviation, but only in one direction here. Okay, so let me mark up the 95 here. There we go. So if we're only going one standard deviation, then that means that's going to be 34 and 34. We could technically cut that in half. So we're going from here to here, from 80 to 85. So we would have about 34%. And so let's do this last one here. What percent had a score that was between 70 and 75% here? So uh, in this case... Let me go ahead and just do the calculations, and then we'll talk about it here. So between 70 and 75 here. So we're looking at this first blue region on the left here. So right, uh, right in here. And so I know if I go out uh, two standard deviations, I'm going to have 95%. So think of those four regions there. But I don't want those two inside regions, so I'm going to go 95 minus that 68. That's going to give me 27% for those two blue shaded regions. But now i got to divide that by 2 because we want half of that. So that's going to give us just that one region there of 13.5. So the empirical rule tells us a nice way to break up all of these different regions here. The image on the left already has it broken up, but we should be able to calculate those just by knowing our regular 68, 95, and 99.7.